Thank you for joining me on October 2nd, Daily Bible Read. There's two different daily breads for the Daily Bible Read. And we're live now, but I know it heard me from the beginning. Father, we, we come before you as humbled servants. Lord, we ask that you bless your read, the reading of your word tonight. Father, I ask that you speak to us through your word and, and, and enlighten us with the wisdom and knowledge that you have for us, Lord, that only you can give us. Give us the understanding that you want us to have so that we can be a light, the salt and light in the earth, Lord, for those that do not know your son and that have not heard the good news. And we pray, Father, you continually put people in our path that we can share the good news with. And we pray to you, we ask that you bless the hearing and the reading of your word as always. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Our daily reading for today is going to be Ephesians. The insight reading is going to be in Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, and 1 Peter 2, 1 through 11. And the daily reading is Isaiah 14 through 16, and Ephesians 5, 1 through 16. Genesis 4 through 6 and Matthew 2. Sounds like a lot, but it will go quick. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. By grace through faith. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to this. Sorry, I have something in my. There we go. To the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, but of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And the insight story for today, for this one, is the masterpiece within. Yes. It says, writing in the Atlantic, author Arthur C. Brooks tells of his visit to the National Palace Museum in Taiwan, which contains one of the largest collections of Chinese art in the world. The museum guide asks, what do you think of when I ask you to imagine a work of art yet to be started? Brooks said, an empty canvas, I guess. The guide replied, there's another way to view it. The art already exists, and the job of artists is simply to reveal it. In Ephesians 2.10, the word handiwork, sometimes translated as workmanship or masterpiece, and is from the Greek word poema, from which we derive our word poetry. God has created us as works of art, living poems, However, our art has become obscured. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. To paraphrase the words of the museum guide, the art of us is already there, and it's the job of the divine artist to reveal it. Indeed, God is restoring us, his masterpieces. God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive. As we go through challenges and difficulties, we might, we might take comfort in knowing that the divine artist is at work. It is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Philippians 2.13, know that God is working in you to reveal his masterpiece. 
and that was written by Kenneth Peterson. What are some of the ways that you, as God's artwork, have become dimmed? How do you feel he's working in your life these days? Father God, thank you for making us one of your masterpieces. Amen. And starting in Isaiah 14, mercy on Jacob. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will still choose Israel and settle them in their own land. The strangers will be joined with them and they will cling to the house of Jacob. Then people will take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel will possess them for servants and maids in the land of the Lord. They will take them captive whose captives they were and rule over their oppressors. Fall of the king of Babylon. It shall come to pass in the day the Lord gives you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and the hard bondage in which you were made to serve, that you will take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say how the oppressor has ceased, the golden city ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. He who struck the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he who ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and no one hinders. The whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. Indeed, the cypress trees rejoice over you, and the cedars of Lebanon saying, since you were cut down, no woodsman has come up against us. Hell from beneath is excited about you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you, all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. They all shall speak and say to you, Oops. Have you also become as weak as we? Have you become like us? Your pomp is brought down to Sheol, and the sound of your stringed instruments. The maggot is spread under you, and worms cover you. Ooh. The fall of Lucifer. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house, but you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like the garment of those who were slain thrust through with a sword who go down to the stones of the pit like a corpse trodden underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The brood of evildoers shall never be named, prepare slaughter for his children because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with cities. Babylon destroyed, for I will rise up against them, says the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant, and offspring and posterity, says the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the porcupine and marshes of muddy water. I will sweep it with the broom of destruction, says the Lord of hosts. Assyria destroyed. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so it shall come to pass. As I have purposed, so it shall stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, 
and on my mountains tread him underfoot. Then his yoke shall be removed from them, and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed against the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out over all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purpose, and who will annul it? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? Philistia destroyed. This is the burden which came in the year that King Ahaz died. Do not rejoice, all you of Philistia, because the rod that struck you is broken. For out of the serpent's roots will come forth a viper, and its offspring will be a fiery flying serpent. The firstborn of the poor will feed, and the needy will lie down in safety. I will kill your roots with famine, and it will slay your remnant. Wail, O gate, cry, O city, all you of Philistia are dissolved. For smoke will come from the north, and no one will be alone in his appointed times. What will they answer the messengers of the nations? That the Lord has founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall take refuge in it. Amen. Isaiah 15 Proclamation against Moab, the burden against Moab, because in the night Ar of Moab is laid waste and destroyed, because in the night Ker of Moab is laid waste and destroyed. He has gone up to the temple and Dibon, to the high places to weep. Moab will wail over Nebo and over Mediba. And on all their heads will be baldness, and every beard cut off. In their streets they will clothe themselves with sackcloth on the tops of their houses, and in their streets everyone will wail, weeping bitterly. Heshbon and Eliela, El Eliela, Eliela will cry out. Their voice shall be heard as far as Jay has. Therefore, the armed soldiers of Moab will cry out, His life will be burdensome to him. My heart will cry out for Moab. His fugitives shall flee to Zor like a three-year-old heifer. For by the ascent of Luhith, they will go up with weeping. For in the way of Horonium, 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 sorry, they will raise up a cry of destruction, for the waters of Nimrim will be desolate, for the green grass has withered away. The grass fails, there is nothing green, therefore the abundance they have gained and what they have laid up. They will carry away to the brook of the willows, for the cry has gone all around the borders of Moab, its wailing to Eglium, and its wailing to Beer Elam. Beer, Elam. But the waters of Dimon will be full of blood, Dimon, Dimon, sorry, because I will bring more upon Dimon, lions upon him who escapes from Moab and on the remnant of the land. Isaiah 16, Moab destroyed. Send the lamb to the ruler of the land, from Selah to the wilderness, to the mount of the daughter, to the mount of the daughter of Zion, for it shall be as a wandering bird thrown out of the nest. So shall be the daughters of Moab at the forge of the Arnon. Take counsel, execute judgment, make your shadow like the night in the middle of the day, hide the outcast, do not betray him who escapes. Let my outcast dwell with you, O Moab. Be a shelter to them from the face of the spoiler. For the extortioner is at an end. Devastation ceases. The oppressors are consumed out of the land. In mercy the throne will be established. And one will sit on it in truth in the tabernacle of David. Judging and seeking justice and hastening righteousness. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud of his haughtiness and his pride. 
and his wrath, but his lies shall not be so. Therefore Moab shall wail for Moab. Everyone shall wail, wail. for the foundations of Ker Harisith. Her I forgot to look that one up, sorry. You shall mourn. Surely they are stricken. For the fields of Heshbon, I lost my spot, at languish, and the vine of Sibma, Sibma, and the vine of Sibma. The lords of the nations have broken down its choice plants, which have reached to Jazer and wandered through the wilderness. Dang, I don't even have my phone near me or I'd look it up on my phone. Talk about it. Ah, I thought I had all the words that I wasn't sure how to pronounce. I'm sorry, guys. Hereseth. Ah, oh, gosh, I don't know. Talk on it. Her branches are stretched out. They are gone over the sea. Therefore, I will bewail the vine of Sibma. Sibma. That's hard to say. I feel like I'm... I don't know. With the weeping of Jazer, I will drench you with my tears, O Heshbon and Elia. Eliela. 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 <sighs> For battle cries have fallen over your summer fruits and your harvest. Gladness is taken away and joy from the plentiful field. In the vineyards there will be no singing, nor will there be shouting. No treaders will tread out wine in their presses. I have made their shouting cease. Therefore my heart shall resound like a harp for Moab and my inner being for Kerherez. I don't even know that. Kerherez, I think. Ah. And it shall come to pass when it is seen that Moab is weary on the high place, that he will come to his sanctuary to pray, but he will not prevail. This is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning Moab since that time. But now the Lord has spoken, saying, Within three years, as the years of a hired man, the glory of Moab will be despised with all that great multitude, and the remnant will be very small and feeble. Ephesians 5, 1 through 16, walk in love. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all cleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of those these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. Walk in light. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world, in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Walk in wisdom. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. 1 Peter 2, 1 through 11, our inheritance through Christ's blood. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, the chosen stone and his chosen people, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, 
to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Living before the word, beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. The chewing years. My wife recently gave me a Labrador Retriever puppy named Max. One day when Max was spending time with me in my study, I was concentrating at my desk and heard the sound of paper ripping behind me. I turned to find a guilty looking puppy with a book wide open and a page dangling from his mouth. Our veterinarian tells us that Max is going through his chewing years. As puppies lose their milk teeth and permanent ones grow, they soothe their gums by chewing almost anything. We have to watch Max carefully to ensure he isn't gnawing on something that could harm him, and we point him to healthy alternatives. Max's urge to chew and my responsibility to watch him caused me to think about what we chew on in our minds and hearts. Do we carefully consider what we are feeding our eternal souls when we read or surf the web or watch TV? The Bible encourages us, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, 1 Peter 2, verses 2 and 3. We need to fill ourselves daily with God's word and truth if we are to thrive as followers of Christ. Only then can we grow to maturity in him. And that was written by James Banks. Loving, or loving Lord, help us to hunger for you and your word and to stay away from that which harms us. Fill us with your goodness today. And I, this is something I ask myself all the time. When Jesus returns, what will he find me craving? What will I be doing when Jesus comes for his church? What do I want to be doing when Jesus comes for his bride? Amen. Genesis 4, Cain murders Abel. Now Adam knew Eve was his now Adam knew Eve his wife, and we know what that means. And she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. That's what Cain means. Um, it, a man. It, the, the definition of Cain is, is a man. Because I have I have a video on YouTube where I actually each each from Cain all the way down to, I think it's Jesus, uh, or all the way down to, I forgot where it ends, but it's talked about a man came down, and so anyways, it's like basically all the names all the way down till Jesus comes, and it, it basically each name all the way down bears the prophecy of Jesus coming, the Messiah's coming, I have to find that. Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of the fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. 
and this desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the earth. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. The Family of Cain Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city, and, named, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot Mehu, Mehudel, and Mehudel begot Methuselah, and Methus, Meth, Methushel, and Methushel begot Lamech. Then Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the second was Zillah. And Ada bore Jabel. He was the father of those who dwell in the tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who played the harp and flute. And as for Zillah, she also bore Tubal Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Naama. Then Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, listen to my speech, for I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy sevenfold. A new son. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Genesis 5 The Family of Adam this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. After he begot Seth, the days of Adam were 800 years and he had sons and daughters. So all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. After he begot Sorry. After he begot Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. Enosh lived 90 years and begot Canaan. After he begot Canaan, Enosh lived 815 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enosh were 905 years, and he died. Canaan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalel. After he begot Mahalalel, Canaan lived 840 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Canaan were 910 years, and he died. Mahalalel lived 65 years and begot Jared. After he begot Jared, Mahalalel lived 830 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years and he died. Jared lived 162 years and begot Enoch. After he begot Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. 
Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech. After he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had sons and daughters. Uh, okay, Shema and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. Lamech lived 182 years and had a son and he called his name Noah saying this one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had has cursed. After he begot Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Lamech were 777 years and he died. And Noah was 500 years old and Noah begat, begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth, Japheth, yeah. Genesis 6, the wickedness and judgment of man. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil, continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah pleases God. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth, Japheth. Ah. The earth was also, also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. The ark prepared, and God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch, and this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's with 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from above, and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks, and behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds after their kind, of animals after their kind, and of every, and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah did, according to all that God commanded him. So he did. And our last verse for tonight is Matthew 2, Wise Men from the East. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, yeah, last verse. Of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod heard that when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. 
And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah? For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. The flight into Egypt. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Massacre of the Innocents Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and, and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. The Home in Nazareth Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise! Take the young child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. <clears throat> he shall be called a Nazarene. Father, we thank you for the precious gift of your son that you gave as a sacrifice for us, Lord, to pay the price for the sin debt that is ours. We're not worthy, Lord, but you love us that much that you gave your only son to pay the price for us that you became flesh, Father God, because you knew that had to be done, that had to be a spotless, sinless lamb. You became flesh. Jesus, God the Son, your Son, the second person of the Godhead, who bore all the sins of the world, and the flesh part, fully, fully man, but also fully God, the fully man part died the sinner's death so that we could have eternal life with you, Father. And for this, we are grateful and we're so thankful. You're so precious to us and what Jesus did for us on the cross. I thank you, Father, that we have eternity to thank him for it and to show him how worthy he is to be praised. I ask that you again add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of your word. Let it magnify in our spirit, Lord, and let it grow inside of us and keep us on the path of you and seeking you and your word and being righteous through Jesus, only through Jesus' blood that's shed on Calvary. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Just know that Jesus loves you and I love you.
And I pray that if you don't already have him as your Lord and Savior, I pray that you find him, that you call out to him, that he reveals himself to you, that he speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, and that you have that relationship with Jesus. While there's still time. Amen. Thanks. Shalom.